what it takes to reactivate and to service the dream. And if you look at Luke chapter 14, we'll read from verse 28. And Jesus Christ said something that very striking, and you can look it another way. Luke chapter 14. In verse 28. Say, so for which of you intending to build a tower? Sit them not down first and count the costs, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Which of you intending to build a tower? You, you want to work back on the project. Every dream has its own weight. Every vision has its own capacity. If you have a dream, a vision with big and very large white capacity, you must have enough strength to embrace the vision and the dream. Just like our native saying that anyone that has big teeth must have sufficient lips to cover them. I think you have that look at saying. Is the same thing. Whatever dream that you have, you need to continually service the dream and reactivate the dream in order to bring it to pass. It is not enough to say that I want to achieve this, I want to have this, I want to become like this. That is why this moment we want to talk about what it takes, how to service and how to reactivate the dream. And Jesus Christ said, in that verse 28 again. Say, for which of you intended to build a tower? Sit them not down first and count the costs. Whether you have sufficient to finish it. Less happily, after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him. Say, this man began to build and was not able to finish. A what king? Going to make war against another king. Sit them not down first and consult whether he able with ten thousand to meet him that commit against him with twenty thousand. Or else when the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador and desired conditions of peace. Listen very well. We want to look at what it takes to service our dream. What it takes to meet up what we want God to do. Servicing a dream, I told you, is also as reactivating your dream. And I told you that many dreams have died because they were not properly serviced. So that a targeted time to achieve your dream, the purpose of your dream, will be allocated. Putting in mind that the dream is not only just something that God gives you as a vision. In the world we talk about dream, it could be a ministration, a vision that God stirred up in you. God could just stir you up and you begin to think of becoming like this, becoming like that. That is a dream. But dream is not just up. It's a, a vision that is stirred up by the Spirit of God that is in the man. It is also something that you desire to become. It is something that is the kind of ambition that you have. That is the reason why God said in Psalm 145, I think verse 18 to 19, that the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And, and if you look at it very well, look at it. It's Psalm. 145. What did the Lord say? Psalm 145. Verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon his call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. 
So God is saying that your desire is his desire. As long as you are living right with God. The question you ask yourself, am I living right? I pray God will give you the grace to live right in Jesus' name. But we want to consider three ways to service your dream in relation to the time frame or time that is set up. Three ways of servicing your dream. No, I want to tell you, tell you very strongly. Dreams are powerful. Dreams make you to become what you want to become. But we want to talk about three ways of servicing your dreams. Number one, you must make a loud declaration of your dream to have a timing. That is to say, you must declare the dream and the time frame for the dream to manifest openly and say, by this time tomorrow. Hello? You know, some people just want to say, uh, well, that thing can become well, what it wants to become. Listen, you must give your time to your dream. Any time is no time. Anywhere is nowhere. Any place is no place. You must give time to your dream. And you must declare it openly, loudly, and say, as from now to August ending, what will happen? To the... I, you hear what I'm saying now? You must give time, like time. You must tag your dream. You must say from now to August, from now to July, to, from now to June, I want my dream to manifest. Are you listening to me? That is the very first thing, the very first way to service a dream or to reactivate a dream and make a dream to pass. You don't just keep dreaming any time where well, God has his own time. God does not have his own time. Your time is God's time. He made a declaration and it was not mincing words. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thou says the Lord tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. tomorrow. About this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measure of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. He gave it time. He gave it some time. If you want your dream to be properly harvested, properly reactivated, give it time and declare the time loudly before the enemies. It is there you are going to see battles. You know, that sister said, well, after he had come for the program and he wrote those things that he want God to do for her, say, battle started. That is to tell you, sister, that your victory is already at hand in Jesus' name. Anything that did not attract Satan will not make him to raise any ugly head of being raised in war. And what we're saying is that the prophet Elisha, when the hunger in Samaria was so terrible, when the hunger in Israel was dangerous, to the extent that two women came and they promised to kill their children to eat, and they killed the child, one child ate it, and the other one around with the child. You know the story very well. It was so bad, really bad. But the came when the prophets and man of God make a declaration. The situation in Nigeria is not as bad as that that was in Israel. Everybody, I can see smile on everybody's face. Everybody relaxing and rejoicing. Everybody, everybody relaxing, rejoicing. But then in Israel, it was terrible: hunger, disagreements, fights, troubles. Then the man of God came. Said, "This time tomorrow, you know, listen very well. If somebody was going to raise prophecy and say, by August." Or by July, and if you are in May or you are in uh, March, and somebody say if you are by January and say by December this year, I mean it's a bit tolerable. Am I right? It's understandable. But this guy was saying by this time tomorrow, ay, 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 ay. by this time tomorrow, to the extent that one of the persons that was a prominent person in the kingdom said, I beg, all those kind of trash, go and sit down by this time. Yeah. Uh, even if you uh, go open windows of heaven. 
Did that person taste of the meal? Did he taste? I pray you will taste of this meal in Jesus' name. And made the declaration by this time tomorrow. He timed the dream. Hello? Number one thing that reactivate dream is that you must time your dream. Don't just tell me any time what God wants to do with them. Not any time. Every time is no time. Everywhere is nowhere. Anyone is no one. Be specific about the time. And proclaim, declare, announce the time. And let people hear it. Let them hear it. You know, I love something when Paul and Salah were in prison. He said, when they pray in the night, he said, the prisoners did what? Heard them. Did you hear it? They heard them. The enemy should be able to hear you. Let him be provoked. Yeah, they don't start again. Yes, we don't start again. Tell somebody the enemy will not start again. That is the very first way to reactivate the dream. That is to say, make a public, open announcement, declaration of your timing of the manifestation of the dream. Two, so, what you must do in addition to that is that you have to engage the prayers that will put God in remembrance of his word about the dream. What did God say about the dream? Listen, what I told you about what God says about dream. It's not all, in every case God will always speak to you loudly, audibly, or directly. Sometimes God will speak to you indirectly. As soon as you catch, you know sometimes when we preach, pastor will preach on pulpit like this. People, some people are not attentive enough. If you are attentive enough, you will know where God is speaking to you. Two of us, you will just catch that word. And that person must testify. Are you hearing me? And the time the man of God is speaking, talking to somebody, and the person is able to catch the word, that is the word of God for you. You will now bring that word in remembrance to God. Say, God, you told me that I should remind you in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26. You said I should remind you. You said I should. No, I love that man, David. In 2 Samuel, he said, God, bring to pass that which you said concerning your servant David that you will give the house for me. Whether you heard it directly, maybe you were in a dream or in a vision, or God sent the prophet to speak to you directly, or that. You heard God audibly that by this time this year or by August you become like this. You will bring that word back to God to remind God that you have to in prayer. When we're in the prayer meeting like this, you say, God, because we're going to pray. You say, God, this is what you told me. You told me directly. You told me indirectly. I heard you clearly. And when the man of God was speaking, I, I, I claimed it. I received it. And I personalized it. And I customized it. Anything you customize, anything you take as your personal matter, especially when the man of God is preaching now, declaring, that becomes automatically the voice of God for you. I hear what I'm saying now. And at that point, in the prayer meeting like this, as we're going to pray, you're going to say, God, this is the time. I want that thing you said to me. Look at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43, verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. What did he say? Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. As soon as God hears you, as soon as it happens, you will be justified. When God says, my son, what are you saying? You say, hey, Lord God, you told me that day that this is going to happen about me. I say, I'm oh God, but I didn't, I didn't tell you what to So you use your servant, the man of God, I heard him and I cleaned him. He said, hey, but then, I say, you say, let us reason together. Somebody here today that you are going to remind God will come to pass your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I'm going to tell somebody at the end of this episode, look, whatever God has spoken to you, either through me or through any man of God, all through the word of God, all through vision or dream, all through audible voice. Today, appropriate it. Bring it to God and let it reactivate the manifestation. And it will be so in Jesus' name. And number three. After you have done all, you have to put 
yourself in order. That is to say, all instruments that are required to aid the implementation of the dream must be put in order. All instruments. You know, sometimes people, some people keep praying without putting their house and everything that is required in order. Hello? Are you listening to me? All the instruments required to make the dream manifest or to make the dream properly implemented had to be put in order. What did I mean? If you are a trader, for example, sort the money for the business. It may not be plenty money because if God is in need, it becomes plenty on his own. Am I right? Get the money for the business. Get your store. Go and rent your store if you want to be in store. Or if you want to hawk, go and get your wheelbarrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Get and get the wheelbarrow. And if it is rainy season, go and get your coats. If it is that umbrella coat that you want to use in hockey, go and get the umbrella thing. All the things required for the implementation and the manifestation of the dream. Get them ready. But as you are praying, those things that are required that you have put in order will be touched by the Lord. You know, just like the God can just get the wheelbarrow, just like God, the angel of God can touch the wheelbarrow. As you go through the wheelbarrow, before you reroute it, they don't clear what you carry. But the angel of God touch you. Amen. Amen. But if there is no wheelbarrow to rule, what will God touch? Nothing. So all that is required to make the dream properly implemented, get them ready. That is how to reactivate the dream. That is why we say in Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Look at the Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Paul was telling Titus. Say, Titus, my son, hear me and hear me very well. It is not only prayer, Titus. It is not only this and that. So, but Titus chapter 1 verse 5. For this cause let I thee in Greece. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. The things that are wanting. And ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Things that are wanting. You set in order things that are wanting. There are things that you need to put in order. There are things that you need to acquire. There are things that you need to buy. There are things that you need to ask people to assist you with. If, for example, you don't want to start a trade or you want to pray about a trade, or God gave you a promise of becoming something and something, something like that, make inquiry about the things that are needed in that trade, in that business. And where you cannot afford, ask people to lend you some of those things. For a start, you may not have the whole money to start in that level. Oh, the sister begged, let me your cooler first. I want to hawk rice. You don't, you don't think I must buy cooler first? No. Oh, sister, I want to rent a wheelbarrow. You may not get money to buy or make a new wheelbarrow. Ask! I will rent a wheelbarrow. And at the time you start, because you have prayed, because you have announced, the angel will come. You know when Paul and Silas were praying that the prisoner had and the angel had and the angel came. When you will announce, no, yes, no. the grace of God upon everyone now. Yes, no. The power of God upon everyone now. Yes, no. As the hand of God is upon you, Amen. you will see the touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the hand of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace of God fall upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will never suffer in that dream. Amen. You will never expect that dream without expectation in Jesus' name. Amen. I say receive great expectation. Amen. Receive power. Amen. Receive deliverance. Amen. Receive healing. Amen. I command healing upon that individual in Jesus' name. Amen. You will never lack.
work again. Amen. Your dream will manifest. Amen. Your dream will be resuscitated. Amen. It will be sustained. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As many that have been complaining and lamenting and telling people, I don't know why my own is like this. Every day I go for program, nothing happens. Today is your day. Amen. Receive a touch from heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. That finger that is saying that you cannot go forward, that individual that is saying that there's no way for you, I stand against him now. Amen. I stand against him now. Amen. And that individual case that was handed over to somebody, the original planner has died, and he handed you over to somebody, I come against that person right now, I come against that individual now, come out of him in Jesus' name! Amen. Oh, the person that you are being wrongly suspected and you are being crucified for nothing, I take authority over that power, I break that power, I break that power, I tear that garment from you in Jesus' name. Amen. That situation that you have been passing through, complaining, you are bitter, you are complaining, you are bitter, today I turn your bitterness to sweetness in Jesus' name. Amen. I so receive sweetness. Amen. Receive grace. Receive love. Your helper is coming. I decree and declare helper for somebody. I see your helper. I see your helper. I see your helper. May your helper locate you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As he locates you, you will know the truth. And your helper will not abandon you. That individual that turned the face of your head by against you in the time past, right now, I arrest that individual in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoever stand against this decree and this prayer, I curse him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. The grace of God follow you home. Amen. The power of God follow you home. Amen. I'm mighty of God follow you home. Amen. Jesus, thank you, Father, for praying and saying. Jesus, mighty name, I pray. Amen.